Well, a very warm welcome to this session. Thank you for joining us. Uh, my name's Alex Whittles. My contact details are up on the screen. If you want to chat about anything on this or anything else um, about Power BI, Microsoft Data, please come and feel free to have a chat. I'm on the information desk or drop me an email. Uh, a bit about me, I'm on the organizing committee for SQL Bits, so thank you all for coming and joining us this week. A big thank you to our Orange helpers as well for all the work you're doing in our AV, AV crews. Um, and I run Purple Frog, a Microsoft data analytics consultancy covering all aspects of Power BI, data warehousing, data lakes, cubes, machine learning, etc. And I'm a data platform MVP as well. So the agenda for this session is relatively simple, a nice one-liner. We are talking Power BI calculation groups. This is the last slide you will see, apart from the feedback slide. Uh, please do remember to leave feedback after all of the sessions this week. We really do appreciate it. Uh, there's a link on the mobile app and on the website agendas and on all the speaker slides. So let's get into some demos. What are Power BI calculation groups? Well, first of all, let's have a look at what you do in Power BI without them. Here we've got a relatively straightforward um, sales database. Now, what do you want to know when you're reporting on sales? You want to know how many you've sold and how much you've sold. But it's never that simple. We also want to know if we've chosen a particular date, how many we've sold this week, this month, this quarter, this year. How are our sales compared to budgets and forecasts? How are our sales year to date compared to last year year to date? There's all sorts of different variations and flavors of a simple sales measure. So how do we go about creating that in Power BI? Well, before calculation groups came along, we had to do quite a lot of manual work. So you quite often saw a process like this, where you had a, uh, a measure table, and in there you have, here's our quantity measure, and then you have different variations of it. You may have uh, month to date, um, which has its own calculation of total MTD function, for example, of the quantity and the date dimension. Or you may have a uh, previous month to date. Well, that's a little more complex. You've got to write, start writing some DAX for that. And that's fine. No problem at all. We can all write DAX. But then we go on, and we end up having quite a lot of them. Previous quarter to date, previous year to date, quarter on quarter growth, et cetera. That's all OK. But then we want our actual sales measure as well. We have our sales measure. And then all of the measures cal calculated again, replicated for our sales. And then you go to other measures, like budgets or anything else. You start to get 20 different versions of temporal calculations, 20 different measures. You've actually got 400 combinations, and no one really wants to write that much DAX. Maintenance is a nightmare. Development's a nightmare. Everything goes wrong. Welcome to calculation groups to help us avoid this problem. If anyone ever played with multidimensional cubes, the um, scope statement allowed us to do that in the old school ways. This is the new version of that in Power BI. Now, Power BI, sorry, calculation groups are fully supported in terms of their functionality in Power BI, de Power BI Desktop and Power BI.com portal. But you can't create them. You can use them and view them and play with them, but you cannot create them. The only way of creating them is to use the tabular model editor, an external tool, which hopefully you're all aware of. If you're not, you should be, because it's an amazing tool. Uh, just um, Google or Bing for tabular model editor. You only need version 2, which is the free one. There is also a version 3, which is even better and does a lot more. That is a paid tool, but I highly recommend getting it. Once you install it, up on the external tools bar on the top, you get a tabular editor button. Now, you can launch tabular editor from your start menu, but if you launch it from Power BI, it automatically hooks into the Power BI report that you are looking at at the time. So it makes life nice and easy for you. And down here, you can browse your model. Here we've got all of our different tables, our columns, etc. And we can create a new table. And if we create a new table, we can create a calculation group. And you can create many different calculation groups. We're going to create one called um, date logic, because we're going to wrap up all of our year to date, month to date, quarter to date in one place. So call that date logic. And if we expand this, we need to go and change the name as well. Now, once we've got this, this creates a new table. This table doesn't contain any data. All it does is, depending on the selections in this table, it affects the behavior of other measures in your, in your model. 
And we do this through creating calculation items. And each calculation item is a different interpretation or layer of logic on top of your, your calculations. So let's create a new one. Let's start with a simple year to date. And in here, I can then paste some DAX that does something to override our measures. Now, I'm not brave enough to write DAX in a live demo, and we, ha we only have 20 minutes, so I'm going to blatantly do some copying and pasting. So a relatively simple DAX statement. Our total year to date of our selected measure using our date ta uh, column in our date table. Note here the selected measure function there. That is one of the key aspects of calculation groups. This makes this a generic DAX expression that will work with whatever measure the user has put on their visuals in their report or in a DAX statement. So it says if they've chosen sales, put sales in there. If they've chosen quantity, put quantity in there. It's a generic expression. So this will say over whatever measure we've, we've selected, calculate total year to date over our date. So once we've done that, we can save it. If we go back to Power BI, it gives us a nice yellow ribbon to say something has changed. Refresh our model. And if we, if we refresh our model, we should now be able to see in our table over here, we have date logic in there. And in there, we have a single date logic column. So what happens if we start using this? Well, let's use this table on the bottom left. And I'm going to add a filter. Now, if you look at this, this is looking at, uh, let's say, March 2019. And we can see here we've got uh, whatever values are in there. I'm going to drag on our date logic as a filter, and I can then choose that calculation item that I selected. And that should now, he says confidently, what did I do wrong? Let's try it again. Year to date, there we go. That's now overridden that with a cumulative value that keeps on increasing throughout the year. I've still got the sales measure selected in this visual, um, but I've dragged on the calculation group to say, override the sales value with whatever I've selected in here. Now, if I drag on quantity as well, then that calculation group also applies to any measure that I've put in that visual, because that's acting as a filter over that entire visual. So let's add some more. Let's go back to our tabular model editor. We can then add another calculation item. Now we're going to go the previous year to date. PYTD. And again, we're going to do some copying and pasting. So here, we're saying calculate my selected measure and override it by filtering the date table where I've got some sequence numbers here. So every year has got its own sequence number. So I can easily say I want the year to go back one. So I'm saying filter it where the, date, date, the year sequence is one before the current date year sequence. And I only want year to date. So if I'm on the 4th of June this year, I want to see up to the 4th of June last year. So I'm now saying where the day of year, 1 to 365, is less than the current day of year. Relatively straightforward. Check that's OK. Save our model. And we can then go back to Power BI, refresh. Now I'm going to get rid of um, my sales value. And I'm going to put, uh, I'm going to turn it into, some, into a matrix. And I'm going to put my calculation group instead on the, uh, the columns here. So I can now see in this table both my previous year to date and my year to date in one place. Now, I could replace that measure with quantity or with stock level or whatever it may be, and that single calculation item selection is going to work on everything generically. So once you've defined your date logic, you haven't got to go back and keep writing it again and again and again. It doesn't matter when people add new measures. They will automatically be inherited into this same system. Let's go through and add a few more. We've got. Uh, let's go year on year. Now, with this one, we're going to start layering calculation logic on top of each other. So here, we're doing two different calculations. One of our selected measure using our calculation group as year-to-date. 
We're going to deduct from that the same thing, but with our data calculation group as previous year to date. So we're starting to layer on. We've already got two calculation items. Now we're going to say, we'll use them both, put them together. So you haven't got to keep repeating the same DAX again and again and again. Check that. Save it. Go back to Power BI. For some reason, that didn't refresh. Let's try it again. There we go. And now we've got uh, year on year. Um, and so you can start building up lots of combinations of these. We can do a percentage on there, which layers it even further. So I'm going to grab my year on year percentage, come back to our tabular model editor, year on year percent. Now this is doing a very similar thing. It's saying, take my year on year, the last one I created, and divide it using the previous year to date. So now we've got three layers in there. Check it, save it. Always check and save every single layer you create. Don't create all your layers and then view it in one go because that's when things go wrong. Check your logic very, very carefully. So now what do we have? Slight problem here. Our sales or our quantity measure we're using is an integer. We've just created this year-on-year -year percentage. Problem is we've defined that underlying measure as an integer. We don't want that for this. We want to override the formatting to say, with this particular calculation group item, we want to replace it with a percentage formatting. And we can do that as well. Go back to tabular editor, choose our year-on-year -year percentage, and we have a format string. Put that in there, and once we save it, all goes well. There we go. So now, that's not only overridden the calculation, but it's overridden the formatting. Hopefully you can start to get a feel for how powerful this is when you're building complex models. This kind of functionality used to be the in the sphere of cubes to really get that power. Power BI was always more simple calculations. Suddenly with this, you can create phenomenally complex combinations of business logic with a lot of different measures and different tables. And also, this isn't limited to a single table of data, sales table. This would also work for any table you have in the whole, uh, in the whole Power BI model. Any questions so far? Is that making sense or yes, question? Good question. How do you handle which one of the measures you want to show in the visual? Um, it's a table. It's a table with a single column. So you can treat it like a table as if it were a region or a product. Doesn't really matter. So here I've got the, uh, the, the date logic on columns. If I get rid of that and instead put it on a slicer, Let's make that a little bigger so you can actually actually see it. Then let's do that one as well, actually. Then as we select our value here, it's going to automatically update everything on the screen. It's just another table. It's just another, another f uh, slicer. If we actually change it into a chiclet, we now get actually quite a nice display where we can, again, make it bigger. Uh, so now we've got a nice interactive slicer that we can then use that to, in fact, let's make that single selection only use that as a filter so you can change your entire visual, your entire dashboard, to be specifically everything's year to date, month to date, quarter to date. So that means from a user interface perspective, you can choose a single date. 
and then allow them a nice chiclet slicer filter um, to evolve that and change that to whatever style of functionality you want. Obviously, like any filter in Power BI, you can link that to any visual you want. So you could have one visual which, which shows you whatever they've selected, and another visual that responds to the slicer of look at it alongside year to date, month to date, quarter to date, etc. You can also put DAX expressions in the formatting. So I hard coded it to be a percentage formatting. If you put a DAX calcula calculation in there, you can actually look to see what measure's been selected or the value of it, and then evolve the formatting dynamically to make that work. It's all sorts of things you can do with it. Question. Very, very good question, whoever that was online, thank you. What if you also want to show the basic measure, the unaffected measure? So here, we're, we were showing, if we put that back on, um, uh, let's get rid of that chiclet slicer, put our date logic back on our columns. So we were seeing just sales. Uh, now we've added the, come on, delete. You can do it. Not letting me delete. Okay. Um, let's go back to tabular model editor. We can create a new calculation item called, let's call it actual. Now the actual value is going to be unaffected. Um, so we can just say, I'm going to have that as my selected measure. So now, if we go back to our Power BI, we now have an actual in there, and if we choose that, it will give us the actual sales completely unaffected by any, any calculation group. Um, I'm gonna try and get rid of that again. There we go, got there in the end. So now, in our table, we can see actual, previous year to date, year on year, et cetera. Now, you can actually affect, uh, alter the order these happen in as well. Uh, you can't do that from Power BI, but if you come into here, you can say, I want actual to be first. It's a little tricky to get right. Then year to date, then previous year to date, then year on year, then percentage. Save that, and that should, if we refresh it, now show us in the order that what we want. And that's quite important, because once you start to build up 10, 15, 20 different calculation items, there's a logical sequence that makes sense. You don't want year to date, quarter to date, previous year to date, month to date. That doesn't make any sense. So do make sure the ordering is nice and grouped to make it easy for users. If we go back to Tally the Model Editor, any more questions online before we move on? Thank you. <laughs> Covered. Great, thank you. Uh, you can add many different calculation groups into the same data model. When you create one, um, you can define the, uh, the precedence of it. Uh, where is it here? There we go. Oops. So here we have the calculation group precedence. Here you can define the priority of what order they get calculated in. So let's say you've got one which is what we've just done, the date logic. We've got another one which may be budget actual data, budget value, uh, budget variance, budget variance percentage, for example. Then you can combine the two together to say budget variance year to date, budget variance month to date, et cetera. But it's quite important to get that ordering correct to make sure which one applies, applies first. Uh, you can also use it, which is very, very cool, which I haven't got time to show you the demo, but I'll show you the concept behind it. Um, if we look at the data model here, uh, we've got three different links to our date dimension, order date, due date, ship date. Um, the guys at SQL BI, Marco and Alberto, wrote written a really good blog post on how you can use a calculation group to use the use relationship function to say, I want to view the same dashboard, but based on order date, ship date, delivery date. And depending on which calculation group you select, it'll use the correct relationship 
because of that. And that applies to all of your measures. So really nice for building quite complex date-based like sales, uh, sales reporting. So that's all we have time for for this. Uh, I will say a very big thank you to you all for coming to this session. Uh, I would ask you again if you wouldn't mind to leave some feedback for us for this session. And have a great rest of the day. Thank you.